Good morning. Welcome to today's Sunday School lesson. Sandy and Valerie Moore with you once again. And we thank God for another privilege and opportunity to come together and study His Word. We thank God for each and every one that's here. And we pray that this lesson will be a benefit and a blessing to you. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for another day. We're so thankful for, for, for who you are. And we thank you for the truth of your Word. We pray right now, Heavenly Father, that you would touch our hearts Touch our minds and open our understanding, Heavenly Father, that we may understand what you have us take from this lesson, Heavenly Father, that we may put it into action, Heavenly Father, and not just be hearers of your word, but be doers of your word, that we may be more effective in our service to you and to others. We thank you for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, and it's in his name that we do pray. Amen. 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 So the title of our lesson today is Preaching to Enemies. Preaching to Enemies. And it's coming from Jonah 3, verses 1 through 10. And here Jonah preaches repentance in Nineveh. And the city repents. Our key verse today is Jonah 3 and 10. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Jonah 3 and 10. Chapters 1 and 2, we find that Jonah flees from God's presence after his call to go and preach to Nineveh. And then we find that John, John, Jonah repents for his disobedience. In Jonah 2 and 7, while he's in the belly of the well, 2 and 7 says, Jonah said that when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And Proverbs 3 and 6 reminds us that in all your ways, no matter what you're going through, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Okay. And so, once again, we have a few outlines here. And the first one is coming from Jonah 3 verses 1 through 4. And it's Jonah preaching the word of the Lord in Nineveh. The second call to Jonah. Jonah 3, verses 1 through 4. 3, 1 through 4. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Nineveh shall be destroyed. In verses 1 and 2, this shows the amazing love of God to his wayward people. Yes. Though Jonah did everything he could to resist the first call of God, after Jonah repented, God called him again on behalf of his people. God called him again. And God did this out of his own grace and his mercy. So the word of God came to, so the word of God comes to many of us as believers to do God's will in the way of preaching, teaching, helping, or serving. But we sometimes make excuses as to why we can't or why we won't. How long will we continue to fail him? We must be about our father's business. God told Jonah to arise, go, and wait. He was to go and preach, but he had to wait on the message that God would give him. Mm -hmm. We often worry about what we will say or what we will do or how we will be received when given the task by God. But if we walk in the Spirit, depend on the Holy Spirit, Matthew right. 10 and 20 tells us that if we will, that it will not be us speaking. When it's our turn to speak on behalf of God, it will not be us speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. In verses 3 and 4, having learned the lesson of resisting God, having learned the lesson that resisting God is not a good thing to do, Jonah obeys the call and goes to Nineveh. Jonah was fired up and ready, and he made three days of progress in one day's journey, telling Nineveh about the destruction that was to come within 40 days if they didn't turn away from their sins and turn to God. Romans 6 and 11 reminds us that in the same way that we should be dead to sin and alive in God through Jesus Christ. Amen. 
So the number 40 here has symbolic meaning in the Bible. So it says rain fell for that number of days in judgment on wicked humanity over in Genesis 7 17. 40 was the number of years the Israelites wandered in the desert because of their faithlessness in Numbers 14, 33 through 35. It was the number of days Jesus fasted before facing the tempter in Matthew 4, 2 through 10. In each case, God considered the completion of this number of days or years to be sufficient to excise evil or prove its absence. None of us having that amount of time before being overthrown was nothing more than fair in God's reckoning. Okay, we're going to move on to our next okay, so, so Jonah preached to Nineveh with conviction, compassion, and concern because he knew the results of rebelling against God. And he knew that those results were not good from his own experience. So we can't, he, couldn't effect, he couldn't effectively tell them anything unless he had gone through something. And we can't tell anybody anything until we've gone through something. Jumping ahead here. So now our second outline. Um, this is coming from Jonah 3, verses 5 through 9. And this is the response of the people of Nineveh to Jonah's message, which was repentance. Jonah 3, verses 5 through 9. 5 through 9. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed, published through Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let, him turn, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God would turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? Amen. Amen. So repentance is something that you have to do. Mm -hmm. So the people of Nineveh believed God, verses 5 through 9. They believed God and show true repentance by their action. They were all on one accord in their wickedness, and now they're all on one accord in their repentance. From the greatest of them to the least of them, they expressed the true sign of surrender and humility and change. Repentance begins with believing God. As we believe God and his word, we have the power to transform our lives according to his will. True. And repentance mean, means crying mightily to God. It means coming to God with passion and seriousness about our sins and our need for his mercy and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And the scriptures say that those that come to God must know that he is God and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now Jonah was sent to preach repentance. Romans 10, 13 through 15 says, For everyone who calls on the name of Jesus will be saved. How then can they call how, how then can they call on the one in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? All right. And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Jonah's message from God touched the Ninevites' hearts open their minds, and change their lives. As followers of Christ, we have been commissioned to go ye therefore. We have been commissioned to go ye therefore and teach all nations, whether friend, enemy, or family. And so, once again, true repentance begins with the heart and is verified through righteous behavior. Righteous behavior here. So for that reason, then, the king commanded his people to reject their evil lifestyle. And that's for us, too. We, we need to reject 
anything that we're doing outside of the will of God. Turn away from sin and turn to God. Mm -hmm. And there in verse 9, you know, again, they were hoping, you know, that um, when it says, who knows, God may yet relent. They were hoping there. So when the king says that God may yet relent, the idea here is of God's changing his mind about something and then acting in accordance with something and then, I'm sorry, and then acting in accordance with that change of mind. Mm -hmm. But a change of God's mind would result in a change of his action. So the king's hope in this regard was not unfounded, but it also wasn't assured. So the people had been told they would perish. For God to follow through on his word to them would be just. It would be just. All right. So they had hope and they had faith. And we know the word says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Right. So they put their faith into action through their repentance. Mm -hmm. well, you're doing something there. Okay, we're going to um, move on to our last outline in Jonah 3, verse 10. Here where God is responding to the people's repentance. Jonah 3 and 10. Verse 10. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of evil, that he said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Mm. Jeremiah 18 and 8 says that the Lord says that if that nation, our nation, even our That's nation, right. his people, that I've warned turns from his evil, then I will relent of the disaster I had planned to bring. God is speaking to us today as a nation and as his people. Mm -hmm. Matthew 15, 8 through 9 say, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Galatians 6, 7 through 9 says, Be not deceived, but God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he reap. For he that soweth to the flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit of the spirit shall reap life everlasting. And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap a harvest if we faint not. In this verse here, verse 10, is one of the key passages in Jonah. It captures God's forgiving nature here. Here we see seeds of the gospel. Salvation is offered to all people, to all peoples, regardless of nation, language, or culture. The Apostle Peter wrote that God was not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And that's what he, he says that in 2 Peter 3 and 9. For God has always so loved the world. Mm -hmm. So this historical record tells us, however, that Nineveh's repentance didn't last. So the prophet Nahum, who came along about 150 years after Jonah, cataloged specific sins of which Nineveh was guilty. And these included violence, corruption, and idolatry. idolatry. And you'll find that over in Nahum 3. And that are all of our scriptures. So I will conclude here. With grace without borders. Since throughout scripture, we witness time and time again that God loves mercy in Exodus 33 and 19. The story of Nineveh illustrates this in extreme fashion. The enemies of God's own people were spared when they turned their hearts toward him. God's intention for all humanity is to encounter his love and remain in it. The Apostle Paul cataloged all of the forces incapable of separating God's people from God's love in Romans 8, 38 and 39. No outside source can cause that separation, but we can voluntarily cause it ourselves by rejecting his will as we become as the Ninevites had been. When we do so, repentance is here as the Ninevites discovered. Today, we also should accept the reality that God's work will not be limited by geopolitical lines. We see Jonah's attitudes in both individuals and faith communities who fixate over which groups of sinners are too far beyond the reach of God's love. 
Meanwhile, we are reminded that we have a Savior who dined with sinners in Luke 7, 34 and reserved his fiercest anger for the self-congratulating Pharisees in Luke 11, 39 through 52. Our Lord, our Lord intends to establish a new people from every tribe and tongue in Revelation 7 and 9. God's love will go everywhere. We can experience joy at the prospect or we can resist this reality. Our attitude does not change what God will do for our enemies, but it will change how we react to his blessing, those we would curse. Let me read that again. Our attitude does not change what God will do for our enemies, but it will change how we react to his blessing, those we would curse. Think about it. If God was concerned for a petulant prophet in a morally bankrupt city, then his loving commitment to us will remain unshaken. So we can celebrate that God is a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, Jonah 4 and 2. And in the face of divine kindness, we, like the citizens and rulers of ancient Nineveh, can repent. Mm -hmm. We can repent. But I have one more thing there with um, verse 10. Just had a question here. Just a question for you. Did God's relenting make Jonah a false prophet when he prophesied, yet 40 days and none of us shall be overthrown? Not at all. For two good reasons. One, God acted in total consistency with his word. Mm -hmm. And secondly, God did judge Nineveh as recorded in the book of Nahum. Nevertheless, like it said, in light of their repentance, he delayed the promised judgment another 150 years. Amen. And we can learn from Jonah to not look on only our own needs, but also on the needs of yes. others. And there's a lot of people that need to know that the wages of sin is death and that the gift of God is eternal life. And that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. People need to hear this. Yes. And they need to hear it from believers. Yes. Believers who are rooted in the truth of the word of God. So just a thought to remember. No human boundaries limit God's grace. No human boundaries limit God's grace. Amen. This was a short lesson today, but it was a very good one. And we hope and pray that um, something was said today that you'll be able to receive and um, apply to your daily lives. We thank you for tuning in with us today. We thank you for allowing us to come to you and try to rightly divide the word of God mm -hmm. to you. And we pray and hope that you all have a very blessed week. So at this time, we'll um, end with a word of prayer. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this Sunday school lesson, Lord God. We thank you for the reminder, Father God, that repentance requires us doing something, Lord God. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and for your mercy, you, Lord. Lord God. We love you. We adore you, Father God. And we just ask that you just bless each and every one, Lord God, that's within the sound of my voice, Lord God, that tuned in today, Lord God. And we just thank you once again for your word. And it's in the mighty and sufficient name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Amen. Looking forward to seeing you in worship service. Yes, so we welcome you all to um, join us in the parking lot at 930 today or via Facebook. Once again, we thank you um, for tuning in, and we hope you all have a very blessed week and a safe holiday. Amen. Bye-bye. Goodbye. St. Andrew PB Church, where Elder Beeford Moore III is pastor, is located at 1393 Swancott Road, Madison, Alabama, 35756.